Welcome back to the Nailing Podcast. I'm your host, Brett Merriman. In front of me, um, two people who are currently talking about uh, Jolly Jumpers and or Juvie, which sound like completely foreign to me. Um, Lily Betcher and Sally DeFreeze. Hey, guys. Hey, what's up? What's a Jolly Jumper? Jolly Jumper is like a thing that the baby suspends in and like jumps. You can do it from a door. Oh. Like or, we, we had them like as kids. Tripod. Okay. We had them as kids, like from the door, and you like hung on the spongy thing and like jumped. Jolly Jumpers is a brand, but then the other thing is, um, you can like have this like stand so that you don't if your doors aren't regular sized doors. I see. Sorry, I'm just cleaning up here. Like, there's a bunch of shit around me, and I just realized it. Like, right when we started. <laughs> oh yeah, clean away. That's Dylan's space the for those listening. Panda. While they clean up, uh, you may be wondering what is the mail-in podcast. We do our best to answer your questions. You may run into situations in your 20s or 30s that you need help with, and we're here to do just that. Get a laugh and maybe walk away with something useful. How can you help us out as an audience? Tell a friend about the podcast. Maybe send them a clip. Maybe a segment that makes sense. Hit subscribe on iTunes and follow on Spotify and hit the hotline number to leave a voicemail, 888-362-MAIL. That's 888-362-6245. Or you can write in at the link in the Twitter bio at MailInPodcast. Uh, welcoming back, Lily Batcher. What's been going on in the life of Lily lately? Ooh, Tough question. <laughs> things? Uh, nothing fun, I guess. I went to Cabo last week. That was pretty that looks That looked very tight. Is that uh, Bane's first time in Cabo? Bane's first time international. He's wow. Mr. Worldwide now. He was sure. on Cabeza Watch. He uh, looks kind of like Mr. Worldwide. He so does. Honestly, missed opportunity there for a Halloween costume. Or an Instagram caption. Or an Instagram caption. Mm-hmm. You could Damn edit it. your old one. I could edit it. But no one uh, knows yet. He <laughs> crushed it. Okay. He loved Mexico, as I suspected. We're going again in January. Fritz is going. I, th- I think him and Fritz are going to tear it up. Really? Yeah. Wow. T- gonna... He took like three hour naps in the afternoon. I was living my best life, having some cocktails. That's phenomenal. It was great. The two Vaqueros down there in, in Cabo. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, yeah. Um, speaking of traveling, have you? I don't know if you guys are aware, but um, Dylan's bachelor party is coming up. And we're all going to Vegas, and the, the the squad is very excited because both of your spouses are attending. We're attending too. We're just going. Oh, really? Yeah, ourselves. Sally and I decided oh, we're okay. gonna go gotcha. take the babies and just post up. Oh, I just post, just post might. up. <laughs> I might. Just March keep... is a hot time in Vegas. It's good for. It's good for us. Bet. Brett? <laughs> is that what you say? Bet. No. Um, um, Drew got that text in the airport on the way back from Cabo mm-hmm. and he immediately responded, I'm in. And I was like, <laughs> are you Bane's gonna... first birthday? I was like, are you going to check with me or like ask? And he was like, I mean, no, I'll make it work. I was like, oh, so you're not even going to just tell me or even like look mm. at the dates, see if we have something going on. He was just so, he was that in. He was in. Okay. Like he didn't even, I had to like steal his phone and read the dates. He didn't even <laughs> tell me. Wasn't so, even a thought. He was. He's in. Okay, I'm excited. This is my my first time doing Vegas, Vegas. I've been there for one night well, for work. It's unfortunate that Sally and I are not part of it because no Vegas is Vegas without a couple members mm. of the, the young. Sisters. I think the last time you were you were on Lily, we talked about the, your bachelorette party, <laughs> or maybe it wasn't yours, but somebody yeah, else's. I mean, let's be real. <laughs> it's not like we'd get you anything cooler. Yeah. As <laughs> Just, you know, we were having to like like walk around like old. Losers, mm. not getting any attention. So it's not like you're gonna miss. We're it not would, gonna be able to get you any. It would just cool. be add-ons to the the cocktail bill. It'd be like, well, yeah, you didn't not, get them for we free. Go, we're not gonna like hang out with y'all. Oh, Sally, like <laughs> is saying we're gonna go. There should be. You guys I kind should be of, like, like jokingly said it the other night at their house, and now I think Sally's like, okay. What's that? What's the movie where there's the cool island and the, like the singles island and the uh, couples you're island? About couples retreat. Yes, couples yeah. retreat, where it's like. We're, we're at the, like, the cool island. Oh, and you Bali guys East just... and Bali West. Or yes. something like that, uh, yeah. To be fair, on TV, none of y'all would be at the cool single island either. No, I'm just... We would, <laughs> y'all we would, would also be at the couple's island. We would all want to be at the cool singles island because we would want to be cool and we would not be. We're, we're gonna, like, this, ba- this is the first bachelor party I'm going on with like guys in their mid to late 30s. Late, so there's like built, there's Dylan. there's built in like <laughs> chill time, which I've never experienced before. Like go in and take, like, take four hours at the hotel and just regroup. Yeah, I think the, he got honestly, Drew with the golf. The best part about Vegas, quote me on this, is that there are like 
really, really good blackout curtains and nice beds. So you like you mm. post up and you just have like the best sleep. Like it gets dark as shit in your room. Mm-hmm. You have it's a like a, a, a way to get away and get some extra sleep. Yeah, <laughs> for, for us. It'll be just me and so me and Klein are just gonna keep keep running. We're golf. Y'all are gonna be with Drew because Drew Absolutely. does not like to sit down and like. And I was like, it's not gonna be that crazy. Like half these people are married. It's like an older group compared to like bachelor parties mm-hmm. you've been on before. And he was like, oh no, not me. I'll be at the casino and they're taking naps. I was like, let's okay. go, Drew. All right, great. It'll be me, Klein, and Drew. And then everybody else can be napping. Probably not Will. Will is a nap. I feel like like Will's... I took a two-hour nap today. (laughs) Are you a big nap person? I am a huge... Like, the worst part about having a kid was not being able to But I also think if you Mm. you aren't a nap person and you have a kid, you turn into a nap person. No, Will still does not nap. Really? He thinks that it makes him groggier now. Mm. Wow. When he wakes up. Sucks for him. Yeah, I'm kind of... I, I subscribe to that. No. Where if I when take I was, a 30 minute nap, I'm like toast for the rest of the day. No, no, no. And I don't want a 30, 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Yeah, you got to be that. an hour. At least an hour and a half. Oh, my God. I want to basically be like a you're, you, Like you're dreaming <laughs> in these night? naps. Yeah. Second you're night. You're getting like almost the same amount of sleep I would as prefer like night. a good yeah. four hour chunk of time if possible. That's a night. That is so sleep. long. That's like a full night. If I wake up before an hour, it's upsetting. So no, then after good. two hours, it's too long. No, it's not. Do you nap in your bed or like on the couch? In my in bed. In the bed. You got to go in the bed. Crazy people. You can't go on the couch. That's not a good nap. That's like going to be an inter- inter- interrupted half-ass nap. You need <laughs> Maybe in Maybe that's the bed. why I'm not good at napping because I've only Fan ever really on, tried. One leg in, one leg out. Just sleep. like you're going to bed. Just treat yourself like a baby. Get it dark in there. <laughs> put a noise machine on. Uh-huh. Get in your the covers. Fans. And cool. then do you set an alarm or do you just let yourself go? Depends. Just let myself go. Well, she oh probably gosh. sets an alarm sometimes now with Fritz. No, I just have my phone on. Where you can hear him. Yeah. There you go. He's the alarm. Fritz is the alarm. Um, that's nap talk on the Malin podcast. Really nap talk. You want to do some questions now, guys? Yeah, we got we have a loaded epi. We do, we do. Hello, Brett and esteemed guests. I went to Cabo to celebrate my birthday last weekend. Shouts. Wow. It was wonderful. Last weekend. Last I was weekend. also there, <laughs> so maybe I saw you. It was wonderful. Great food, hit the happening party slash dance spots, and saw some lovely live music. I was feeling great going into Sunday with a flight out later in the evening. On the boat ride to breakfast, no big deal, my wallet popped out of my pocket and fell into the marina water. Very sad. Definitely deflating and kind of put a sour taste on my whole weekend. This isn't the first time in 2021 I've had something unfortunate happen while traveling and even though I'm I'm not discouraged from traveling altogether, it just feels like you can never do a trip without fucking something up. My question here is, can you take us through an unfortunate travel story? And more broadly, how do you deal with those kinds of hiccups and stay positive without too much trouble in paradise? Thanks. Before, I don't have a good story, but I know Sally does. First things first, rookie mistake booking a late flight out on a Sunday. Ooh. You got to get out like morning middle of the day mm-hmm. you don't take the last flight out rookie early mornings mistake. only when i leave now. see but do you guys do the thing like the vegas thing where you get a like a 6 a.m flight yes, and then yes. you don't and then or you just stay up all night no you, you don't, don't stay, stay up, up all, all night, night but, but you get up early and then you get home ugh. to your bed right. and take a nap let me just I tell you that. leaving vegas this is tip for the bachelor party you got to get on the early flight out because that airport Oh, I'm sure it's not. the worst airport in the United States. And I would think Cabo is probably not that far off. Like, mm-hmm. last flight out of Cabo before the work week on a Sunday. But the Can't other issue is the further. Agree with that. For some reason, at the Vegas airport, the like, there is an exponential curve of like your flight getting canceled the more minutes that go and by. And all the people mm-hmm. on the later flights are people who were too drunk and missed their first flights. Yeah. So then it's just chaos just getting worse and worse same thing with Cabo not that it's like Vegas type people but like the longer you wait the more chance that it's getting canceled delayed it's delayed and you miss your connection you lose something like Mm -hmm. had he been on a flight out early he wouldn't have lost his wallet because he wouldn't have been going to breakfast on Marina he would have been on his way to the airport so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think 
This is on Mistake him. number yeah. one is <laughs> Damn. last flight on a Sunday. I we just flew back on a Saturday, actually, which I, at the time I was like, man, I could stay one more day. Mm -hmm. But then when we got back, I was like, thank God we have Sunday at home. And I'm not like getting home at 9 p.m. and having to go to work the next day. Well, I think that is a good move when you have like a week vacation. Yeah. If you're doing a weekend, obviously you're coming home Sunday. That's my number one rule for bachelor bachelorette parties. Get the first flight out. Because then you no conveniently Sunday, aren't there when they have to clean up the Airbnb. You're like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I get Sorry. that. And also, no I one's doing anything. Like, I'm a big FOMO person, but on mm -hmm. Sunday morning when everyone's been wasted for, like, three days, no one's doing anything that you're like, man, I really wish I would have stayed for that breakfast. Like, no one's yeah. doing anything that you're missing out on. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. I have a 9 a.m. flight. That's perfect. Okay. Yeah. I don't want the 610. The I 610 hate, like, is rough. Yeah. Uh, I, guess, uh, I guess we need to book those flights for us. Okay. <laughs> Well, I think it's on the 9 a.m. as well. Okay. I told the 610 can be rough, and you don't have to do the yeah. like 2 a.m. red eye. I think that's really intense, too. Very I'm probably intense. Putting, I'm probably going to book Drew's flights and mm. I'll book them on the 6 a.m. <laughs> 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 to be a bitch. Yeah. Don't get too crazy. Okay. Do you have a story? Um, I don't have uh, the only story I have is, is it's like I kind of pride myself on being like a dad in these situations. So mm -hmm. I'm very like, making sure things don't happen but the one time i had like a red eye flight get canceled i had to sleep at the airport yeah. so i slept at a starbucks Ooh. inside the gates on Ooh. a starbucks couch oh, but the good thing is like i my flight got canceled so i had the ability to like stay out later uh -huh. it was like an 11 o'clock p.m flight got canceled pushed to the next morning for at like six o'clock so i said okay i'm gonna stay out and that's when i did go right from the bar to the airport Ooh. said screw the hotel Go to the go to the airport, slept at a Starbucks and and woke up and I was good. But no, I don't I don't really have like any crazy, like shitty stories like that because I try to take precautions that so, so it doesn't I, happen. I know somebody who was coming home from China. Okay. And was black out on their like before their oh. flight. And he and his friend got on the flight. They were totally blacked out. Unblacked out mid flight home from China and had no idea, like, don't remember getting to the airport, had oh, no idea no. if their like luggage made, made it on. It? Yeah. Thankfully their luggage was with them, but like they like can you imagine the the scaries if you unblack out on a flight and you're like And there's just like nothing no idea where my shit is. Nothing you can do for the next ten hours. Yeah, you're you just, just stuck have to on a plane. Sit there. Oh, in a oh. tube. I think that's you like, just I think you like place to come get drunk to again. Come to. You, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's like that's the move. It's like a couple couple glasses of red wine and an ambient and yeah. see you later. <laughs> uh, okay. You have some good you have I have one with you where you, you scratched your eyeball. Oh, I'd scratch my retina. <laughs> that was so a lot of these have taken place on the end of a trip. So and like this guy's at the that retina point, was kinda early on the trip. No, it wasn't. It was oh, the last, it was last day. day. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was with you too. We yeah. had to stop at the the eye doctor on the way. Into <laughs> no, I went with Klein. Yeah, we went to you went to the casino. All right? of mine have been. I, I, okay, uh, there was a couple times in college where on the way to a trip, like spring break of my sophomore year, we had a a mixer the night before, and I lost mm -hmm. my wallet and phone, <laughs> and like was had to get on it. I have a good one of Sally. <laughs> I, I on, <laughs> and you almost missed your flight. Oh, you okay. Won. Actually, actually, this oh is the worst gosh. one by far. I was gonna say there's also some bad like poop related ones. <laughs> like I got Montezuma's Revenge coming uh. home from your wedding, but that was like right after. And Will had Montezuma's Revenge last year on the way home from Cabo. So did Drew, and he had to. He was like, I can't physically fly. I'm gonna have to get up and like poop my pants yeah. <laughs> ten times on the flight. <laughs> Don't drink the water in Mexico. One time oh when we God. were in Paris, my friend literally was like, got s some sort of food poisoning. And we were flying, it was when I was living in Spain. We were flying from Paris uh, back to Alicante. And she was like white as a sheet. And we got to the airport. And this was like, I mean, I don't know, 10 years ago. We like couldn't print our boarding passes before. And there was a huge line. And she was looked like she was going to pass out. And I went up to the front of the line and basically was like, see my friend over there? And I like pointed to her. She was like keeled over on a suitcase, just looking pale as shit. I was like, she's pregnant and has really bad morning sickness and we need to like really move through security. So they moved us to the front, checked our bags, escorted us through her on a wheelchair. No way. <laughs> oh, wow. Pulled the pregnant card. she was sick for like two more days. Anyway, 
the story Lily is referring to <laughs> is I just thought of that. Here. Where was where are we going? I was going to Lollapalooza. That's right, Lollapalooza. I had been in Houston. Uh, I lived in Houston at the time, and the night before, I went out on a grouper date. Remember grouper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I pre will, pre will, uh, pre time, right? Like a year before will, I think. Um, I had gone on a grouper date. And then ended up at Lil Woodrow's in Houston. Which one? Uh, the one in Midtown. Okay. And I ran to a guy that I'd kind of been talking to mm-hmm. for a little bit, who I like, and he gave me the ick. So oh, like, it, it, had, was, it had fizzled. It did majorly. F- I okay. like hated him the whole time. Oh, okay. But I was okay. bored and wanted attention. <laughs> yeah, sure. Like like twenty six year olds do. Yeah. Oh. For so, her birthday, he brought her Chipotle and a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And she literally like, this is not a balloon. podcast about him. <laughs> she popped the balloon. She was so pissed. Shush, Lily. Okay. So I got hammered and yep. went home. He apparently brought me home because I was very drunk. Oh, no. And like told my sister, like, she is intoxicated. And I was like yelling at him. I was being very belligerent. I woke up at 5 45 in my bed, in my clothes. I had a. 6.45 flight out of oh. Houston Hobby. Hadn't packed anything. Nothing. Had packed nothing. So I packed, got to the airport, boarded the flight, still in the A group, all within wow. an hour. Shocking. That's impressive. Shocking. The other thing is my phone was on 2% battery. Okay, this oh. was a long time ago. So I hadn't, I had packed a charger, but it was like in my suitcase. Just hadn't made it to the phone. And... I literally sat in the exit row, looked to the guy next to me, and I was like, do you have a phone charger? <laughs> I'm sorry, my phone's like dying. He was like, oh, sure. I'm definitely still drunk at this point. Reeking of Hands booze, me yeah. a cable, and then I'm like, do you have a computer I can plug my phone into? Because <laughs> like the flight was all, you couldn't like plug it into anything. It was like a Southwest airplane. Yeah. So he let this stranger let me plug my phone in to his computer. And then I got an onslaught of texts from this dude when I landed in Chicago oh. that was like, I have never been treated that way by any <laughs> human ever. And I deserve more. Like this whole like novel. And I just, guys, I preach on this podcast all the time like what a shithead I was in my 20s, which I think has made me grow up a lot. Okay. And I needed those experiences, but I was not a good person in my 20s. He sent me this whole novel. Like about how he liked me and I treated him like shit and blah blah and I just answered okay, that was it. <laughs> Oof, better than no answer. That's and dad, then I literally got off the plane and like guy. went straight to Lollapalooza. So yeah. made it. But moral of the story is, don't don't go out the night before your flight. Just don't do it. You're gonna lose your shit. Mm-hmm. I, I I always do it. You always I don't know do why. it, and it, it, like all of. It's it's really dangerous because you are just begging to like to lose, lose your, your ID, ID, yeah, and not be able yeah. to get. On I the actually flight. don't know if you lose your ID and you're like in another city or something. What? How do you get on the plane? I have done it before one time randomly, and it wasn't. I wasn't even like out. My um, ID fell out of my bag, and I re- realized it like on the day I was flying home. It was in Tulsa, and so I went early and you like I had to show them different yeah, things. Yeah, like do a bunch of stuff. Yeah, there's ways you can get around. But it, not when but... you're in a foreign country. Ooh. Yeah, no, you no, no. need your passport. Yeah, you, good thing you got to not his passport then it would yeah. fall out. I don't know. Oh yeah. Didn't. You have to like go to an embassy. Oof. That's a beating. Consulate. Yeah. No, I don't I lost my golf clubs on that a flight sucks. to Canada one well, time. That sucks. But they Did like you get them back? it was just a it was just it, yeah, they came like a day later. Oh. So I had to use their set of like Beautiful Titleist clubs the first day. Uh, like, you, okay. you Lily's <laughs> wedding yeah. first day. Yeah. When we flew to Lily's wedding, my mom and dad, one of them, don't really remember who it was, left a garment bag that had my dad, dad's tux. No, dad left the garment bag with his tux and mom's handmade oh. mother of the bride mother dress. Mother of the bride dress. And In, it was Mexico. And we like had to bribe some dude to go back onto the plane. Back and through, because we'd already been through customs. It was like oh. when we were in baggage claim. So they like... They Dodged ended up getting bullet, it, but like he had to like go back through customs. Some airport dude. I was gonna say if I've learned anything in Mexico, bribes usually are. That's the that's way how you go. get around there. A couple twenties will go a long way. So I'm saying. I'm 
same yeah. with same with Vegas. Yeah. You know what's uh, a couple twenties could help you out with this Christmas season, guys? Tell Gift me. giving. And you know where I'm going for my gifts this season? Uncommon goods. If you're anything like us, you want to win that best gift giver ever title this year. We've got a secret source for that. It's Uncommon Goods. Uncommon Goods is just right gifts for all of your loves and likes. We're talking moms, dads, teens, in-laws, besties, your one and only. It's not stuff you can find just anywhere. Uncommon Goods has unique and creative gifts, often handmade by independent artists and makers. And they have gift guides too to help you match the right gift to the right person. Here's what I found recently, guys. You ever see the the whiskey or bourbon cocktails that are smoked with like the, the wood like mm-hmm. at the table? Uh-huh. I have my own smoker, personal individual smoker for cocktails. Are you going to pull that out at the uh, Merriman the Merriman, cr- Merriman Christmas Cocktail Hour? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It'll be yeah, pulled out. Are. It'll be pulled out. Wow. Can't it's wait. cool. I and shots on Common Goods for that. Recently got on um, to look. For some stuff, and they have some the really good Christmas section. I got a little advent calendar. Oh, wow. they have all we'll have kinds of stuff at Uncommon Goods. Right now, I'm looking at the kebab grilling baskets. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. They're just like baskets for grilling kebabs. I have that are to easy. bring our own little Uncommon Good to your cocktail. Maybe hour. we need to mm-hmm. have a, a gift, <gasps> a gift exchange, exchange. a Ooh. white elephant at the Merriman Christmas cocktail hour. Yeah, Uncommon Goods. Okay. I think Uncommon Goods could help us out with and that. And like, I don't think that anybody would come with the same gift. There's so many things on there. You right. Know what I'm saying? I, because yeah. they look. Yeah, they, that's the worst. When be, you go to a white elephant and like three people bring the same thing, and you're yeah. like, oh, okay, we already did this. Bottle of tequila. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Guess they what? They all want this. Go to Uncommon Goods because they look for the products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the US. They have the most meaningful, out of the ordinary gifts anywhere. They also uncommon, excuse me, they also uh, offer uncommon experiences. Choose from live online classes in mixology, cooking, flower arranging, embroidery, guys. Oh, we gave up on that. We gave up on that. And more from hand-picked Let's artists simulate. and experts. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give back one dollar to a nonprofit partner of your choice. So here's the deal, Lily, Sally, to get fifteen percent off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com/mail. That's uncommongoods.com slash M A I L for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. I'm in. Let's do the next one, guys. Hey, y'all. I'm throwing an ugly Christmas sweater pre function for the bars at my house. What wintertime Christmas cocktails would be good to make for an ugly sweater Christmas party? You had one one time at the Merriman Christmas Cocktail Hour. I made a Christmas sangria. You're absolutely right about that. Yeah. Ooh, that's good, Red. Really good. You had you used to make one at Piazza, and it was basically, I mean, it was basically all alcohol. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's like. So what you do okay. is you go get a jug of apple cider at the store, mm-hmm. and then you literally pour. I have a dumb question. A whole handle of Captain Morgan's 151. Oh. R- spiced rum in, in there in a pot in a pot and you and warm you it up heat it up oh so but the Throw spiced some, like, rum like cinnamon sticks and shit in there is apple yeah. cider the same as apple juice no there's a difference and what I, is the difference i think that apple juice is more processed not if it's 100 percent juice for 100 percent kids I don't know. <laughs> are you looking it up yeah the official description from the Massachusetts Department of Agriculture says cider is raw apple juice that has not undergone a filtration process to remove coarse particles of pulp or sediment. On the other hand, apple juice undergoes filtration to remove pulp and is then pasteurized to extend Less the processed. shelf life. Hello. So more like Sally wins. More yeah. like grainy. Or it's like <laughs> yeah, think, of, right think of like orange juice that you just squeeze Pulpy. right out of the shit and it's and it's good to go. Right. That's apple cider. Yeah. Whereas like OJ in a little box. So yeah, basically you, and you do like, like that. one to one parts of apple cider <laughs> and, and rum and really, spiced rum. Really we would get the one fifty one because we were in like sophomores and <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you need to go that far. Like any spice not, drum will do. <laughs> you should see this Everclear fucking. Yeah, we got Everclear <laughs> I mean spice cider. Not like, like a grain alcohol. Like, like, and then she would do the like cinnamon a cinnamon stick. stick. Um it was strong. Another Sally, thing this year we, she's bringing, rubbing alcohol from the hospital. Yeah, another like, thing we, we would go. do <laughs> is uh, hot chocolate and pepper sh- peppermint schnapps. Oh, you ever do a haircut? 
I mean, not with hot chocolate. That no, would be with, horrible. No, with, with chocolate syrup, though. That's a fun Christmas thing. Oh. Where you lean back in oh, a chair and somebody... I mean, I know vodka. what a haircut it is. Okay. We do it with vodka and, like, juice. <laughs> you, guys, uh, so you guys just like to drink. Juice. Yeah. Well, that was what we did for haircuts. Chocolate oh. syrup that seems... <laughs> Like, oh yeah, you're like you're like they'd be like hard to swallow. Um, well, it's it, it, it's college, so it's like oh shoot, we got some on your neck. Let me get that, and it's like oh oh, oh so, wow. so it's wow, flirty. This is, this is <laughs> Randy's like, like yep, flashback. Uh, <laughs> Randy's like good times. Yeah, <laughs> I okay. Another one actually. Sally's coming in hot with the cocktails. Well, Lily was over the other day, and we I had just gone to Trader Joe's. Oh, this is and good. they do have actually some really good like sparkling apple cider like in cans that you can mix mm -hmm. some stuff in but actually i had gotten some cranberry ginger sparkling like some sort of drink that, that sounds like such a trader joe's drink yeah no yeah it's the cranberry there's like three flavors cranberry ginger is like the one that's right. like red and, okay. and so and then you put your alcohol of choice in there mm -hmm. probably something light vodka. you know probably a vodka make a little punch put some cranberries and cinnamon stick in there mm. festive then you're cooking yeah. Sally and I drank those also while we were pregnant last year and pretended like they were cocktails. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Um, what's your favorite Christmas beer? Uh, right now we have, well, it's Shiner's here. Sure. Mine and too. It's yeah. too sweet. Uh, but right now we yeah, are rocking with some Anchor Steam Christmas sales. Ooh, I, I, great I, packaging on those. So we, last year they like Christmas sold out sales. before really we could good. get any and Will loves them. And mm -hmm. so I bought a pack like a couple of weeks ago. And then I just got two more that are just sitting in our fridge ready to be. Got to stock up. Have to have one of those. Got to stock I, up. I had also said recently on the podcast that Accumulation by New Belgium is like my absolute favorite. But mm -hmm. I it's still can't buy it. or just in general? It's like a white. It's a winter IPA. beer. Yeah. Or winter. It's a good ski no beer. one loves a Shiner holiday cheer like Harry Young. Oh yeah. He, he sends a picture the first time he drinks one every year. I do and that with he, shipyard. Like a lot of people so, can yeah. drink like a couple. Yeah. Harry can drink like a full six pack and more and like all night of Shiner cheer. And me and you are always oh. like, that's a lot of cheer. It's a lot of it's a lot of flavor. Uh, calories. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Like usually I switch to like a Yangling. I think or something. you like need one. I also like... think, you know, for the people who might not want something as crazy, just a nice glass of champagne with a couple cranberries in mm -hmm. it. Mm. That's a good one. Always uh, that That's always easy. works. That's Absolutely. easy and no one doesn't like it because it's not like a flavored thing. It's just cranberries in the glass. Yeah. So have some fun with it. Get get a couple, have some beer for like the people that just don't want to get crazy. Have something peppermint related, have something chocolate, hot chocolate, have a maybe like that. I have a haircut neck for Brett. Yep. <laughs> for Brett. Brings me back. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to bring these to the the merriment, the MCCA. Is it the third annual? Well, it, we didn't it, have one because well, of COVID. Tough, tough. Well, and three of the women were pregnant. <laughs> it's also true. You didn't go last year. We didn't have one. We had a Christmas party. I'm talking about the, the Merriman Christmas, Christmas cocktail, cocktail, hour. cocktail hour. It was unfortunately canceled, and so it'll be the second and annual. I would have been pregnant at yeah. the cocktail hour, so. Just no. saying, we're doubling down this year. Yeah, that's that's happening. It's going to be the Merriman Christmas cocktail. Uh, double hour. Double hour. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the next one, guys. Uh, hey, Mel and crew, I'll keep this one short and sweet. Spoiler alert: It's not, but it's a pretty juicy one. I think I know that I'm majorly attracted to my buddy's girlfriend. Some might even say I have a crush on her. To preface, I'm in a very happy relationship with a beautiful girl who challenges me and makes me excited for my future. It's also a very healthy one with loads of communication, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. But for some reason, though, I can't fight the infatuation I have for this other girl. Her and I get along great, and some would say I get a little flustered when talking to her, and I do think she's very attractive. I would never pursue these feelings I have for her, as it would be majorly inappropriate, one. And two, like I said before, I wouldn't trade my relationship for the world. I just wanted to know if these feelings or this infatuation is something normal. Have either of you been in a similar situation? I'll shut up and listen. Thank you. Yikes. Yikes. Um, Yikes. I think, like, just straight off the rip, I think attractions, that's normal. normal. Like, mm -hmm. you can think somebody's good looking. You can think somebody's infatuation, engaging. Maybe infatuation, maybe Infatuation's where you cross the line here. I agree. Uh, part of me wonders, like... I mean, the way he's describing her, he sounds like he's like really in love with her. her. Yeah. <laughs> that I think is a little concerning. For me, I'm like, I think people get confused when they have chemistry-like chemistry relationships with somebody that's not their partner. Okay. And that they're 
attracted to. That they're attracted to. And I think, one, when you add physical attraction in and you have good rapport with somebody, Mm -hmm. that can make things confusing. And I think people are so used to like, okay, if I like can bounce off somebody and I find them attractive, like I have to But society be into says them. like, ooh, that's crush stuff. Right. And it's hard for your brain because that's how you've like put all of your relationships that maybe you feel this way about a person and like really y'all just have a good friendship. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's what's happening here, but I do think that there is a chance that like maybe she's just one of those people who's like enigmatic and like easy to talk to and fun and cute and that's confusing him a little bit sure i will say this uh there there's like a guy that i went to college with who's like just so charming like he's just like one of those like charmers when you're around him you're just like oh my god like conversations rolling he's like so like he's one of those people who like touches your arm when he's talking to you and like you just seem very like in the moment with him right I don't feel that way about him now. I I haven't even seen him in a few years. But like in college, he had a girlfriend the whole time. But you're always like, ooh, okay. But it was like, that's just his personality. Mm -hmm. Like he's like that with everyone. I think people are just flirtier too. And it's like, it it's not as concerning if you're just like, if that's your personality. Like she might just be kind of flirty with other people. And like she thinks nothing of it. But he's like, oh, she's like kind of into me. Like we really... Are hitting it off, and mm-hmm. we have a lot of chemistry, right? So I think that can get confusing. Or he legitimately—I mean, it sounds like he really likes her. I yeah, think. he's like, I get flustered when I talk to her. That's like a that's but another level. But he also level. could be getting flustered because he's like, oh no, am I? Like, that's true. There's I like have there's this kind yeah. of chemistry with her, and I'm like kind of attracted to her, but I also yeah. love my girlfriend, and it's my and friend's I'm flustered friend. because it's my friend's friend. And I'm flustered talking to her. Her friend's girlfriend is what I mean. Yeah. yeah, that could totally be the case too. Like um, he's stuffy. just. I don't know. I don't think it's normal though to. I, well, let me let me say this. I do think there's like an element of grass is greener, where it's like the what Correct. if game. Absolutely. Yeah. So that can be contributing. Yeah, like you could always have if you have a serious relationship. There's always could be people that you talk to that you're like, oh wow, I really get along with this person. But it's like that doesn't mean totally anything. I I think the grass is greener thing is also like really important because it sounds like he's having interactions with her that like. Obviously, they're not, like, bickering or, like, especially because they're not, like, getting to know each other. There haven't been any, like, red flags or, like, situations that they've he's been put in with her where he's like, oh, I don't know if I like that. Probably Mm -hmm. they're all social situations where, like, she's, like, they're having chemistry and she's on one. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So you don't get the, like, mundane monotony of The the sucky parts that you're like, oh, this isn't that bad, but, like. He's not getting that with her. Yeah. I think this could be possibly just very, like, innocent until it crosses the line of, like, are you, like, fantasizing about her or, like, picturing her when you're having sex with your own girlfriend? (laughs) That's probably not... Like, that's probably crossing the line. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's definitely crossing the line. At that point, you should probably look into it a little further. Right. I'm, I'm curious as to, like... You guys mentioned the the only get like the the good parts. Mm-hmm. The, so like, I want, are they like talking on the side? Like, is she, yeah, are they are they like, each other's emotional well, this was what shoulders to cry on? What, type el- of thing? what else I'll say? I think knowing that you have these feelings for her and you are in a good relationship where you care about your partner and you also care about your best friend, you need to be careful and probably not let it cross the line into inappropriate. Like I wouldn't go out of the way to like talk to her Separately, by herself. Or like text right. her on the side, like you said. Especially not that you can't people can't be friends with members of the opposite sex or people they're attracted to when they're in a relationship. But mm-hmm. at the same time, like you have to realize the boundaries of like you don't want to be putting your yourself or her or your partners in a situation where maybe you took it too far. So mm-hmm. like keep it platonic. Interact with her when she's when you're around your friend, or y'all are all in couples together. But I really wouldn't let it go in a situation where the two of them are by themselves. Yeah, and I think the one of the things he can do is recognize that, like he's he's kind of dancing around this problem. Like recognize it. Like yeah, I'm I'm attracted to her. I think the grass is greener, and realize that that is fueling a lot of this. Right. Where and it's I'm wanting what I can't have. Right. That that is 
totally part I of this I also whole thing. think just give it time because like a lot of times mm-hmm. the new shiny like attractive person you're like oh my gosh like they're so attractive and we're we have a lot of chemistry and we're flirty but then like as they get to know each other more <laughs> odds are it'll probably go away. Well, I think this kind of people have these types of relationships with other people. We often see it and I think we're going to talk about this later with people having like a work wife or work husband mm-hmm. where you um are maybe attracted to this person, you have good chemistry with them, and you have all this shit in common because you work together. Sure. But that being said, like, you don't do stuff with them outside of work, and you have to remember, like, oh, I, I'm so close to them because we are in, like, we are in the trenches together. Whereas with this girl, it's, like, it's different because you happen to know her in a different setting than, like, work or school or whatever it is that you do when you're not at home. Um, I just think... Don't let it cross the line, and mm-hmm. this is fine. Like, it's okay to be attracted to other people that aren't your significant other. Yeah. It's not okay to, like, feed into it because you like her. Like, it's okay to like her and think she's attractive and funny and cute. And get and, along and, and... And maybe stumble on your words because you're attracted flirting. to her. Good, but ba- like, good banter. But you do, good, good banter. banter. <laughs> but you don't want to be, like, trying to text her one off to, like, yeah. have conversations I think her. that's the line. That's when it gets a little nefarious. You're like, mm. Yeah. Like you're trying, like, w- would you rather have your significant other be like attracted to somebody and be like, oh, like she's hot or he's hot or, and yeah. be like, oh, we get along great or like texting them on the side and they don't really let you know right. in person that you think they're attractive or they think somebody else is attractive. Right. I'd, I'd like, I'd prefer the physical, like fun oh, attraction yeah. versus the, the emotional, and emotional, like, and like your yeah. partner knowing it. Like, right. Yeah. Oh, he's so hot. We like, we're always so flirty. But yeah, like, and but it, he, he's a loser, you know. Right, <laughs> like whatever. But then, like if if I find out that you were, she's texting, like texting yeah. on the side, it's like okay, that feels like a different. Serious. Yeah, yeah. Right. Agreed. Okay, best of luck out there. <laughs> yeah. So no, it's I or excuse me, it's normal. Infatuation is not normal. Check yourself. But it might not be infatuation. You right. might just be feeling that because you feel guilty that you have mm-hmm. this attraction. Circumstantial. We'll put it that way. Yeah. You know what? If if he steps out in his Rothies though, look, <laughs> look out because it's just game over. Oh no. She might just she might just go for him right then and there. Rothies is now selling men's sneakers and men's driving loafers. Are you kidding me? Even more big news, Lily. They just launched premium merino wool shoes for fall. You know what I'm rolling up to Thanksgiving in this year? My Rothy's premium merino wool shoes with little tassels on the front, and it looks awesome. Merino wool is nature's perfect material, soft, comfortable, machine washable, and sustainable. Available in cool colors and classic styles you'll want to wear everywhere. Looking good and feeling good just got easier. Unbeatable comfort, which I can attest to personally. They're the only shoes I have no problem stepping out in with no socks on and like not coming home at the end of the night with my feet beat up. They're incredible. They're just comfy right out of the box. Don't you hate it when your white sneakers get dirty too? Guess what? With Rothy's, you just put them in your washing machine. Game over. Stains are gone. Uh, if that wasn't enough, Rothy, Rothy's just launched their first ever collection of accessories for men. Talking wallets, talking carry bags, talking card cases. Rothy's has all your everyday carry essentials. No more worrying about keeping your wallet clean or on the boat in Mexico after weeks of wear. Rothy's wallets are fully machine washable as well. Rothy's offers elevated style that's better for the planet. All thanks to their innovative processes and materials, Rothy's men's shoes are made from 100% recycled materials, even the laces. No wonder why Rothy's best-selling men's shoe, the driving loafer in Navy, gets a five-star review from almost every customer. Sally, have you seen Will rocking his, his Rothy's around? I have. Yeah, they're tight. They're I have really two nice. pairs. Are I have they the navy. No, his are the light. bone one. Yeah, they're with the green. Bone. Yeah. I was gonna say white, but they're not bone. They're like, I mean, they are bone. They're not white. They're like an off white. They're not cream. They're an off white. They're an off. They're, yeah, I think it's literally called bone yeah. with the green tassel on the back or the yeah. blue one. I can't yeah, remember. What I think got. his are blue. I got the the all white ones, and they're just fresh. they're fresh. They're fresh and. The merino wool driving loafer with the tassel on the front. Ooh. To help you welcome Ooh. fall season in style, Rothy's is doing something special. That's right. They gave us the chance to share this super rare opportunity with our listeners for a limited time. Right now, get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash mail. That's rothys.com, R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash M-A-I-L. 
Head to rothys.com slash mail to find your new favorites today. Let's go to the next one, guys. This is easy. Mail. All uh, everything's mail. All everything's just mail. I just have to it's M A I L. Right. Mail. Right. Mail, mail, mail. Hey guys. This is my first time hosting a Friendsgiving. I've been to plenty. And I know I've, I'll well, I'll get through the question first. So I've been to plenty and they have all just kind of blend together. What do I need to do as a host to make sure that people are enjoying themselves, but also bringing enough to the table so it's not all on me to make the fun happen? Like, do we have a perfect number of people? Thanks. So Sally, can I spoil this? Mm -hmm. Sally and Will are doing an episode of Scaries, Sunday Scaries, later on that involves like the food part of Thanksgiving, right? And the, the entertainment around Thanksgiving, movies and shows and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to talk like the social Friendsgiving aspect. Is that kosher? That's totally fine. Okay. I have some tips. Lily actually hosted a Friendsgiving. I hosted a couple, actually three in a row. And oh, then cool. currently don't have a home to do so. So next year, mm. I'll bring it back. You'll be invited. Thank you. Um, he, I think if you're hosting the Friendsgiving, here's what you're responsible for. Okay. The turkey. The turkey. And uh, coordinating what dishes people are bringing. Okay. Because here's where, if you don't want seven people bringing mashed potatoes, we got to mix it up. People mm-hmm. need to bring different shit. So you bring a turkey or get a turkey or whatever. You make the turkey. I think one year we got it from Luby's. I got it from um, Ho- Hoover's. Oh, yeah. Some random restaurant. Some random place on the east side. Great turkey. Okay. And also, I think with the turkey, the gravy. Yes. You're in charge of turkey and gravy. Everyone else brings the sides. You need to um, coordinate with everyone. So put them all on a text, Mm -hmm. being like, hey, message on here what you're bringing, call dibs. If there's enough people, then like two people can bring potatoes. Okay. Or different types of potatoes. Mm, yeah. Because sure. one year, one year at yours, I think I brought scalloped and somebody else brought mashed. Mashed. Uh, that's that's solid. I'm a big scalloped potato guy. Yeah. So. Delightful. Um, and then also as the host, you're in charge of like, obviously utensils, the utensils, plates, etc. Are Matthews, you okay? Cups. Let me ask you. Unless about... someone offers to bring those, then that's fine too. Mm-hmm. Like it depends on how nice you want this to be. Like, if you're going to have 20 people and you're all going to be sitting at outside tables, then you need to supply everything. I mean, or somebody can bring that stuff. But if you're having like a nice sit, sit down, down dinner, then, then that's you probably your, it. your shit. So, how about booze? I think I always, in my experience, yeah. you bring a dish and a booze. Okay. As the host, though. Oh, as the host, you provide like some wine or something, but you have people bring. I mean, again, like Sally said, if it depends how nice it is. If you like want to supply that all, and you have like these cocktails you want to make, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But more often than not, people want something. Like everyone wants to drink different things, and in my past experience, where you get pretty boozy, mm-hmm. and we always ran out of like the wine that just like the couple people would bring. So I always said there'll be this and this, but if you want something else or. You know, here's what I like. If you can, bring a bottle of red wine. Yeah. Or I like the host doing the turkey gravy and also a festive cocktail. A cocktail. Like we just talked about in the last question. Question. Like maybe a, like a apple margarita or like a, a sangria mm-hmm. or a fun cranberry, whatever drink. You do that. And then you tell everyone like, bring a dish and a bottle of wine. Yes. Got it. So you are or beer. In, you're you're or soliciting beer. booze. Yes. Like that's for like the Merriman Spooky Monster Ripper, for example. That's like my worst nightmare to run out of booze. Right. right. But so I what I decided was I'm gonna have enough beer for everybody. I'm gonna have enough wine for everybody. And then buy like one bottle of, of tequila, one bottle of whiskey, and when that runs out, that's out. Like I'm not I'm right. not trying to cover everybody's ass on on hard liquor. I think, I think that's a little different because that's People aren't going to that party to like eat and drink. True. They're going very true to drink. So like the whole entertainment is basically like that you're providing is the alcohol. Well, and right. you're throwing a party versus I feel like a friend's giving is more of a, a potluck, potluck situation. Uh okay. That's totally fair. I, well, I see that. You can have a friend's giving where you make the whole meal. I mean mm-hmm. 
That's fine. Sounds stressful. But I think that yeah, most no of the chance. time, Friendsgivings are more of a potluck feel. So I think yeah. it's okay to ask people, bring a dish, bring some wine or beer. Yep. Um, it's also an easy thing for like the guys to bring. A lot of times, like when we've had mm-hmm. them, we'll ha- we'd have guys that were coming that were like, I don't want to make anything. Like, yeah. And I'd way rather you bring two bottles of wine, wine than like mm-hmm. Hawaiian spring rolls, although they are delicious with the bat. Yeah, I was gonna, well, <laughs> hang on a second like, there. The slander <laughs> for the like, Hawaiian I'd dinner rather rolls. You bring some Hawaiian spring rolls is a bad example because they're delicious. You, why but, do you call them spring rolls? Yeah, dinner a spring rolls. roll is a, a spring roll is like a uh, they're called appetizer. Hawaiian spring rolls. No, they're no? called Hawaiian dinner rolls. Oh, dinner rolls. Well, whatever. Spring, spring rolls is like, like one of those that's wrapped like, up in rice paper. With like a shrimp on it. Oh, a spring roll, like a, a yeah. Japanese roll. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I was calling. That. <laughs> I was like, Hawaiian spring rolls also sound tight. <laughs> I don't know what yeah, they those are, sound but. Good. Um, but you're always gonna have some people that like are like, I don't want to make anything. No, so but then that's those are the people I'm like. Okay, then you either bring two bottles of wine or the napkins or ice. Right, or... that's your other part as host is coordinating this. So when you have like the dumb work friend dude who doesn't know what's going on, you you go, go to the store, get a bottle of red wine and get a pumpkin pie. Like, store or, bought. Or a case of beer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's literally so easy. Most of the girls will spring to action, do something. <laughs> ah, damn. And then the, well, maybe. I know, I know. But like that's just typically... My friends are the ones who are like, although there's sometimes guys who are like, oh, I have this like awesome, awesome like, I want to do this. I will say too, we've even gone so far as to we make a um, like survey, th- not a survey thing, but like a, a sign spreadsheet. Up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And everyone, like a Google you hop sheet, in, yeah. And everyone can pop in. And it was like, <laughs> Aaron, she's very organized. She like had every dish mm-hmm. and then like, Two bottles of this kind of wine, too. And like everyone, you could sign up for multiple oh, things. Oh, okay. Um, but it's like then, a registry. But then, like the week before, it did help because the week before, it was like, okay, no one has signed up for these four things. Right. Then the host mm-hmm. knows, okay, I have to provide those. Here's something got else it. you got to remember. Hit me. Giant serving utensils. People oh, don't yep. bring their own normally. And you need, like, your regular spoons aren't going to cut it. So go to the store and get like a couple. Big spoons. Amazon has like six plastic ones for like a dollar. Right. Do that and maybe like a couple forks to do the turkey with or tongs or something. Because every time at Thanksgiving, you don't like, want to scoop the green bean casserole out with a With like a tiny spoon. fork. <laughs> yeah. You can't be doing that. So don't forget that. You know what? I, like, I'm thinking of every fun friends gaming, friends, you know, excuse me, friends giving I've been to. If we're not on like silverware like or, or actual plates, you know the, the fake crystal plastic looking plates yeah yeah that's like synonymous with friends giving to me because they're yeah. like upgrades over plastic plates oh, but yeah. they're not like full-on i always got the amazon ones that have they're like they're like heavy plastic but then like a gold rim yeah, yeah. you know oh, they're yeah. still cheap but then elevate like, it you know elevate your plastic uh, and then you can all be we dishware. always played that what's that game fish, fish bowl Fish bowl. Absolutely. You have to play that. It's fish bowl. It's like a charades. Uh, I'll, I'll, oh God. Charades. I'll briefly give. The, <laughs> oh yeah, God. We have BTSD with the charades. Briefly, synopsis. Everybody that's there puts in three pieces of paper, a person, a place, and a thing. You write them down on piece oh, of paper. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The first, you you separate into two teams, and it's just every other. So, like, you and mm-hmm. I would be on a team, Sally, and whoever's next to you would be on a team. Every mm-hmm. other. First round is you explain it, like catchphrase. Got it. Second round, and it's 45-second intervals, so you just keep going until you're out of papers. Second round is one word. So you explain. Mm-hmm. Charades. Charades. Charades is the last round. Oh, okay. The It's the same words. So, like, we put all the words in. We do them catchphrase style. Then you put all of them back in. Then mm-hmm. you start again. One word. So if I'm explaining you, you know, and I explained to you, and I said, wash media, Runs the mail in, blah blah blah. Then the next one, I could just say, "Ginger." Damn, you could just say strawberry blonde, Saratoga, Saratoga, whatever yeah. I could say. You know, but it's only one word. <laughs> okay. So Sally, I would also say ginger. And then the third round of charades. I see. But it's the same really, words, so you like cool. start knowing you start what's to understand, in the bowl. Like I know Brett's in the bowl. I know Wash is in the bowl. Uh, it's it's like play. counting cards almost. Like the only issue gotta, like... when we did it with you is that it was a lot of work people, and y'all had all these work inside jokes, yeah. and Will uh, and I were like. It was what? a lot of work inside jokes. So then there, it's also fun to do a themed version, but then you get a lot of the same stuff in there. Like seven people put turkey if you do yeah. a Thanksgiving one. I yeah. see. 
There's also uh, a naughty one. You could do a naughty one. A naughty fishbowl. <laughs> naughty fishbowl. Uh, Fish one nets. last thing I'll say as the host, limited oven space. So that- Our Next questions. Okay. Lily? I was going to say, everyone in my old house, it was like 900 square feet, and I had obviously one oven, and like everyone would bring it, and they'd be like, hey, can I pop this in the oven? And, and I'm like, uh, sure, but like now everything is untimed. So if you can- Bring things as cooked. warm as you can. Right. Cooked for sure. Oh my God, absolutely cooked. But yeah, yeah, warm yeah. to where they probably won't need to be put in the oven. Were you there the year that Reagan put the rolls in the oven and they were uncooked? Ruined Friendsgiving. It, it, they were like uncooked <laughs> oh, rolls. No. They had all this butter. She put them in there and it ste- the butter like dripped onto the bottom yeah. of the oven and it like basically caught fire we were all outside and we walk in and it is like full steam oh, like no. or uh, smoke it was a disaster you can also request that people bring stuff in a pro- crock pot and plug it in yes yeah oh, crock potatoes I'm a huge cream crock pot corn boy. All, a lot of that stuff can all be in that stuff pot. bring in the crock pot and i love you it just warm it up yeah. um the last question on that question would be what entertainment do you need to provide like are you are you deciding we're going to play fishbowl are you playing quiplash for example like I think yeah, you have a couple games or like cornhole or something yeah. like that. Okay. Oh, like I like an outdoor game. Like if a you, we're lucky in Texas where you can kind yeah, of do in that. Texas, mm-hmm. you can do that. Where in New York it was like, oh, you're Too not cool. going outside. Also, depending but, so. if it's like on a Sunday, you could have football on. Yep. Right. Um, but I think you have a game, and sometimes by the end, no one wants to play the game. Everyone just right. wants to like drink and drink stuff. But and, you have it as an option. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I think we covered that one. Yeah, I think so. I'm excited. I, I'm, I'm well, honestly jealous that I'm not having one this year. Damn. Because now that all the talk is getting me pumped. <laughs> um, let's do this one, guys, which is similar. Uh, hey, guys, you're at your in-laws for Thanksgiving. Who gets oven priority for the sides you bring? Like, can I sub out her grandma's green bean casserole that only two people eat for my purple potato mash that was the first side gone last year? Whoa, shots fired at grandma. Shots fired. Yeah, wow. Who gets oven priority? Like, grandma keeps oven priority. Yeah, I mean. Until she kicks it. I She's think got the oven. Oven priority is also how good the dish is lukewarm versus hot. Yes. We we tend to have to deal with this at our family Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Shockingly, we're only a one oven family. But we have miss l- by Jules. luckily neighbors. But <laughs> usually we have She's neighbors. Like, I'm going to run to Kathleen's and pop this in the Yeah. Oven. Last oh, year. Wow. I was like having to go to Kathleen's and like burn my Six hands. Times. I didn't have any evidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, and it wasn't. You were that pregnant close. too, right? I was pregnant like, and I was recovering <laughs> from COVID. It was, was a I great would, like, time. Run back and forth and like put them in the passenger seat. Yeah, <laughs> and like it, it's like not like two blo- two houses down. It's like a few blocks away. So again, <laughs> here's here's where it gets. Uh, what would happen is usually we host at my mom's house. We're, we've cooked everything through, and then. Usually Natalie shows up. She's made a couple dishes. Those need to go in the oven. A lot of times I, I'm always cream corn, so that's the crock pot. Mm-hmm. I think here's what is the deal, and I think I'm going to have to tell Natalie this this year. Uh-oh. Oh, you got to no. cook the rolls b- b- beforehand. They need to be cooked before, and you, you can pop them in for a minute. You better keep those warm suckers warm, though, because that's how they stay fluffy. Well, and- right. And, like, you want them right out of the oven, but, like, it's, it's a lot cooking bread. You can't have... A dish that has to be fully cooked, right? And Except the, the for, reason like, the is turkey. because yeah. of how much you're opening the oven. It's not staying at a constant temperature. If you have it set to three fifty, but you're opening it every five seconds to put shit in I and can't out, leave mom has one oven. It's with like five kids. it's going to be at two ninety five. That's not right? enough to cook bread correctly. Um, so I think what you do is you take the turkey out, and then go all all the side dishes go in to like heat up for twenty minutes while you cut the turkey. While you cut the turkey, gotcha. And like Lily and said, turkey honestly doesn't have to be like piping hot, right? So, right. Yeah. Like, it's like Lily when said, you gravy that shit up anyway, it. it's like yeah, heat the gravy up and that yeah. reheats your turkey. It depends on what the dish is. Will like determine its necessity of being warm. Like green bean casserole and mashed potatoes need to be warm. Stuffing, mac and cheese doesn't need to be that warm. Yeah. yeah it, Although you, warm stuffing is like, oh. it's all I means all one yeah. warm, but. No the offense. Cold, I get that. I get gross. that the purple potato mash was a banger, but <laughs> it, you can't kick out another, grandma's. Another grandma purple gets, potato yeah. mash. You can pop some gravy on that and rewarm it. it yeah. 
grandma's, what was it? Uh, green bean casserole. Green bean casserole. I mean, I guess, you know, if you're like me, you're putting gravy on everything. But, yeah. but green bean casserole, you can't have that cold. And that's just a slap in grandma's face to be like, sorry, no one. You gotta wait till she it. dies. Freezing. Grandma gets the oven. <laughs> yeah. Like, let, let me just put that out there. Don't don't even try. Or Honestly, else you I at Will's house, we've done Thanksgiving with Will's family a couple times, and I one year made green bean casserole from scratch. It was toyed. Uh, another year, I made scalloped potatoes mm. that we had to do at somebody else's house because they were what like wasn't a giant. as tight. Was the we tried to go healthy and did green beans wrapped in bacon <laughs> instead of green bean casserole mistake that green mistake. beans wrapped in bacon Lame. like just like you know little bundles yeah. we oh, like, oh this yeah. is health and it was no one ate them it was yeah. a mistake so <laughs> if you can try to like if you're coming from the same city try to like take it out of the oven right before wrap it in a blanket in the car and like keep that heat in because I, but I, what I was saying is when I've done it at Will's house, like I know I'm the guest here. Will's mm-hmm. dad is making the meal. I'm not taking priority. When he gives me the green light, like, hey, do you want to stick this in the oven to warm it up? I'm like, cool. I got yeah, it. Yeah, you wait. You wait but your turn. You don't, you don't go in there being the guest and be like, I need oven space. I need two shelves. <laughs> 375. I need 375 20 minutes. only. This is a large, weird shaped pan. <laughs> you can't do that. Another. Veteran move. Okay. If if you have a grill, bring oh. it in those silver the mm-hmm. silver trays that and I can hear. Putting stuff in the grill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To yeah. warm it. Like green bean casserole can be in one of those. You can transfer it to a nice dish if you want to. Yeah, you're just trying to keep it the heat contained. You yeah. know what I really want to do is speaking of that big like you can tin also stick dish. one of those in a cooler. Keep it heat contained. Yeah. Heat contained. I want to do the what's the when you like the queso? The smoked queso that people do with oh, those big tins on the grill. And they just the grill. put it oh. on the tin and then they're just like let putting it sit. brisket in yep. there and let it sit. Oh, that looks so good. Yeah. I've never done that in Texas. I need to do that. Yeah. I'm hungry. <laughs> you know what you need at your mom's house or your mom and dad's, Sally? Post Thanksgiving. Post Thanksgiving. You need a tushy in the bathroom. Yeah. I want to give my family and friends something more memorable than a gift card this holiday season, but it can be tough to think of a meaningful gift. I want to give something useful yet unique. Cool yet eco eco friendly, techy, but actually affordable. Hello Tushy bidets tick all the boxes. Buying a lot for family members? Hello Tushy bidets are a great gift for your eco conscious cousin, neat freak sister, farty dad, and anyone who poops. We all deserve a better clean while contributing to a healthier planet. Let's talk about the gift that keeps on giving. Hello Tushy bidet. It cleans your butt way better than wiping and cuts your toilet paper use down by eighty percent saves trees and all the thousands of gallons of water used to convert them into toilet paper and comes with a book full of poop jokes my butt is in love i just i, I set up the to- you set up it up in like eight minutes the other Boom. thing you mentioned yeah. christmas gift this is actually really good as a gift exchange gift because mm. it's like a conversation starter sure it could go white el- it could skew white elephant because of the like the poop jokes but honestly it's <laughs> useful in like just a regular old gift exchange like people people aren't going to think of it and their minds are going to be blown and you're going to win the gift exchange 100% or, oh i got a koozie uh, no you got a tushy you got a tushy you got a hello tushy bidet you ever see like if a bird poops on you poops, poops on your car are you just going to wipe it off with a piece of paper? That's disgusting. No, you're going to put water residue. on it. Right. Yeah, so why would you why would you do anything different to downstairs? Going back. Yeah. Why would you do anything different downstairs? No electrician or plumber needed. Like I said, it installs in less than 8 minutes and there's no like funky stuff going on. There's no, it's not technically difficult. It's just you pop it in and go and then go. Make the restroom your best room with a complete tushy system, including the tushy bidet attachment, ottoman, toilet brush, and tushy, tushy stand and tissues. Join the millions of happy Hello Tushy customers right now who take care of their Yule Lodge the dignified way. Give the gift of a clean bum to yourself or your loved ones this holiday season and get 10% off plus free shipping right now at hellotushy.com slash mail in. Tag us and at Hello Tushy on social media so we can celebrate your clean bum. That's hellotushy.com slash mail in. For ten percent off and free shipping, uh, you want to do the last question, guys? Yeah. Yes. My boyfriend told me he wants to have a work wife. He works in PR with all women around our age, twenty-five, many of whom are single, and who he talks about. 
He said he wants someone to support him and always have his back. I have done everything I could to support him, and he said so, but he said a work wife is a normal thing to want. This is after he has said he doesn't want to support me through tough times at my job. I have to ask him to ask me how my day was. What do I do? Red flag. This is a red flag. Yeah, this is odd. It would be one thing if he just had a work wife, like naturally, like you were saying earlier, like, oh, we worked together for three years and ha ha, it's my work wife, we're friends at work. But like to ask to have one, wants to like recruit one, won't support her, won't ask her how her day is. It's like, weird. This That's is like women weird. being like, <laughs> I really want a gay best friend. Like, okay, do you think maybe a gay guy doesn't want to be friends with you? Have you thought of that? <laughs> like, I, I don't how you probably like, you it's offensive to him. Maybe goes, he, like, wh- who's what is the girl he works with? Like, he's like, hey, do you want to be my work wife? Yeah, yeah. no like, one at no. work. It's like, okay, maybe you have a work wife or a work husband that's like, you just have worked together and you like jokingly yeah. call each other that. You aren't like going out there being like, okay, it's my second day on the job. Who's going to be my work who's husband? Got me. <laughs> Kimberly, who wants, to, who wants to match up? I've been noticing you in the hallway lately. You want to yeah. link up as Sorry. work married? No, what that's the? so weird. Sarah, G chat me later. I want to talk work wife stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I need some support. You seem like a good girl. I, right. Let's I get this set up. I My get, girlfriend like, doesn't support me in the slightest. I need you to, to support me through job related things. That's so weird. That it's. I hate very it. Weird. I feel I'm it's mad one right thing now. If like in my job. Drew worked there, so he gets it. But like a lot of people that have significant others that don't work with us or have never worked there, it's hard to like Mm -hmm. tell them what's going on and then like understand. So it's one thing if you're like, oh, you know, I want to call and gossip with Christy about something that happened at work. One, again, doesn't have to be like a work husband or wife. It can just be a friend that you work with and you go to happy hour with. You go to happy hour with. But and so sometimes like it's not like I'm offended when Drew's like, oh, what happened with blah, 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 getting this job? Like it, that, I'm not like offended that he doesn't ask because it, it would just be too ex- hard to explain. But like that doesn't mean he doesn't support me at my job. It's just like you might not understand. So I'd rather talk about it with someone that I work right. with. That's understandable. But I'm, it's not like I'm walking around being like, wow, I really need a work, you know, work girlfriend to be my girlfriend that I can talk about stuff with because you don't it's support weird. me. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you about this. Like, there are people at work who just understand what's going on better. Guy or girl could be than your significant other. Wife. Right, just because you are going through the trenches with them and you need somebody to, like, commiserate with. But to, like, seek it out. And so that that in that sense, I'm like, she doesn't need to get offended that he wants a work somebody. Friend. Sure. Right. But to, like... Fully frame it as like a work wife, and then also the fact that she said he doesn't ask her about her job again. He probably is not going to understand because he doesn't do what you do. But he, anybody who has a significant other or a partner or even a friend Can deserves they, somebody to be like, "Hey, how's everything going? How's work going? How like, was your day? It doesn't yeah. have to be about like how was your day. Did yeah. you have a good day at work? It doesn't yeah. have to be like what happened." In the OR, Sally. Yeah. Like, I don't have to ask. Like, I, you don't need that. to ask yeah, that, me specific that, that things code, about my work. Code paint, like, how'd that go? Yeah. <laughs> no, well. <laughs> no, I'm well. Uh, oh, no, is everything okay? Um, but, right. I totally, I agree with both of y'all. It's like, first of all, this should happen organically. Like, you don't need to go off recruiting. Second, you can't expect your significant other to, like, totally commiserate with you about what's going on every day in your work life if they don't work with and you. you don't want them to do that all the time at right. home anyways. Like, keep that yeah. at work. But the so fact that he is, one, trying to recruit somebody, two, like, telling her he needs one, and then also refusing to, like, ask, ask her. her. T- to me, the less egregious part is him being like, I need... I need somebody who understands what's going on. The like, egregious I get part that. is him saying, I don't want to support you through tough times <laughs> right. of your job. Like, go find your own work okay, husband. There's it's multiple like, egregious what? parts. But another one is like him specifying it's normal to want a work wife. It's normal to have work friends, mm-hmm. uh, you know, wife, husband, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. It's not normal to be like, it's normal to have a work wife. I feel like this dude. I, they're young. They're 25. I feel like this is like maybe his first job. And like he 
Joe has a work wife, and he, I want one too. He like <laughs> heard the term work wife and was like, "What? <laughs> yeah, like, I need one. I need one of those. <laughs> get me, get me Is on that on the market for a work husband because it's my. Give me on that time. Bumble for work wives. Imagine like, he gets on Slack like in the market. Anybody? <laughs> uh, what, Anybody, hot, uh, hot on the pre- hot off the press in the market for a work wife. Who's free? <laughs> Who wants to go to Irene's after this? Yeah, this this is a red flag to me. It is. And, and what do you do? Is you show him this segment of the podcast and let us whip some sense into this yeah, young whippersnapper. Say, say either I can be your home wife or, or oh, shit or nothing. Yeah, there or, you go. Ultimatum. Hey, go find yourself a work wife, and while you're at it, find yourself a new girlfriend. Nice, because we're out. <laughs> I'm yeah. out of here. Yeah, this is I, weird. It is weird. And I think you have to be like, what? What is your deal what here? Came home and he was like, I'm really in the market for a work wife. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, who? Brett or Randy? <laughs> it's me. I'm Will, I'm Will's work wife. You know this. Yeah, I do know that. But like, <laughs> but it would be weird if he was like, I'm actively recruiting. We're looking to hire a uh, woman intern. Like just, just to be the work wife. That yeah. is, that sounds like 1954. Yeah. Yeah. No thanks. I, you got to confront him. And honestly, if he keeps us up, you got to dump his ass. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Confront him and, and say, this isn't normal. And like, don't try to tell me it's normal because it's not. It's normal to have one. It's not normal to recruit one. And it's also not normal to just like tell me to go fuck off and find my own. Right. So we get, so 12 hours of the day, I'm just your, your regular wife or husband. And yeah. now, then you have your other work wife and yeah. it's, you're good to go. I don't know. Just I think it's weird. Why did y'all break up? Well... Here's the deal. <laughs> Here's he wanted to cheat on me with a work wife. Yeah, he wanted to work. Yeah, maybe, is that what this is happening here? I don't like know. He's just like he's not fulfilled. I feel like he watched some like weird, like Suit. shitty, <laughs> like TBS show where they Mad like Men. have a work wife. He's like, oh yeah, like no, but like a off brand one that like has bad reviews. And he's yeah, like, Suits is honestly morning a show. show. No, I'm talking Spoiler like alert. some <laughs> dumb comedy that we don't even know. King of the... Queens. Okay, sure. Stop naming shows. <laughs> Oh man. Okay, shower thoughts, us Brett. That's all you had to go. Do you one. have any shower thoughts? Or do you want me to just go? Well, I have one that I actually am going to Thanksgiving a fi, if that's a word. Thanksgiving a fi. Yeah, sure. So I had this one last week, or it was one of the ones I had last week, but I'm gonna turn it into a Thanksgiving one. So my original question was Did you have a dish growing up that maybe your mom or dad made for dinner that you thought was like a totally normal thing and then you realize later on like it's – That no one makes it. No one else ate it. And and you were like, oh, like you got to college and you were like, wait, what? Like not everyone eats – like my example was – My example was that we always ate Chili Mac, which is just Mm. macaroni noodles with chili chili on top. And it's not – it's not what you think, where it's like cheesy macaroni, it's just straight up macaroni just noodles. Just the noodles. Okay. And then chili on top. It's actually pretty fucking delightful. That sounds fantastic. But I didn't realize, like, one of my friends ate chili mac too, but she did like cheesy mac and cheese with chili. Which mm. also sounds really, delightful. really bomb. But like, I said that to Will one time and he was like, What? I was like, Literally, okay, we would always well, make chili Will. and then like, Will has his own problems. Well, Will eating the, beef by the Will's raw, family raw beef. They have a little thing with a little salt beef. on it. It's with like yeah. on it. Popping that, popcorn that beef takes the cake on the weirdos. So like <laughs> okay. no one can compare but, to that. Okay, back to I know that people have this because there's always conversations about like really weird Thanksgiving dishes that like your weird Midwestern aunt brought to the table, and you're like, uh-huh. what? Ours is, and this isn't weird, but there's a couple that we eat that I don't think that I've ever like seen anybody else make. And no one would like sign up for them on a Friendsgiving. Right. But I have made before. So one of them is, we don't have a name for it. We just call it the broccoli cauliflower dish. But what it really is, is a broccoli cauliflower Brussels sprouts mixture. Grotten situation, but Ooh, not really. Okay. It's basically broccoli cauliflower Brussels sprouts. And then you roasted. put... Ro- roasted. Or like they're kind of parboiled. And then you... Uh, put a few different types of Campbell's random cream of soups, like cream a cream of mushroom, mushroom and cream a cream of celery. Yeah, you mix it up, put that on. You sprinkle some cheese and bacon. You're good to go. You it's put that in the oven. Goodness. it's and it's vegetables. So yeah, it's healthy. no, it's I would not, like to try. I would like to but try like, this. If we one the year we went healthy, we didn't make it, and Emily cried like basically the entire dinner. Emily she was, was so like, sick. "That's my favorite dish." We were like, "Okay, well, you, Emily, should have spoken up." You don't bring <laughs> and honestly, it is like one of the best leftover dishes because like the like the soupy oh, and gravy, then you get some oh. turkey in there, mm-hmm. and it just 
meshes really well. It makes a it's great. It's a good one. If we ever have a Friendsgiving, I will bring it. I will next year, and you can bring it. Okay. I would love to try. The other one that we do is something that actually Lily is into that I, I'll let you explain it. Okay, yeah. It's like a fruit salad, but it's a it's, Midwest fruit salad. It's there's like five ingredients. It's okay. Baby marshmallows. <laughs> okay. Good start. Mandarin oranges. <laughs> yeah. Crushed pineapple. Okay. Coconut. I'm very on board with this. And, sour cream. And uh what sour in cream the world? It, like makes it kind of mixture and then like, you congeal. top it with um crushed pecans. Wow. And it's so bizarre. It's, and it's honestly it's, not even I can't like it's very the taste. It's very Midwest. Makes no sense. I Jules, Jules is from Illinois. That must be where it came. So from. I, it, she, her family made it. You do the, you do the, the. It like lumps together and it's good. It's a definite okay. Midwest fruit but salad. It's, but the only fruit in it is mandarin oranges from a can, I mean, and also crushed, crushed pineapple, pineapple. Right. from a can. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So we kind of okay. stopped doing it because like they. My mom would make it every year, and like there'd be two scoops gone at the time. And he'd be like me and my dad. And but so, no, like, now my nieces love it, and so it, she makes it again because the marshmallows uh. really get the kids loving it, and like it's sweet. Mm-hmm. I don't know, it's bizarre. I've never met anyone that's even made I've never close to it. No, that also doesn't have a name. It's just like the marshmallow. No, she fruit calls salad. it the fruit salad. That we're like, it's not a fruit <laughs> salad. <laughs> but it is a it's a very Midwest thing to have like a congealed fruit situation. Yeah, I'm looking, at, Ra- I'm looking at, at Randy. I'm like, <laughs> Randy's still laughing at the Yule log joke. <laughs> the dishy. Oh man. Okay, what's yours? I don't I don't know if I have like a a dish per se. My mom always made this sausage roll that was like unbelievable, uh-huh. but that's like more of just a a unique dish. Yeah, but it wasn't. It doesn't have to be weird. It's just something that you're like, every Thanksgiving you had it, and then you're like, wait, what? And then you go to like a Friendsgiving, and you're like, I'm going to bring this, and everyone's like, the what? You're like, the congealed fruit salad. There was always a girl (laughs) at work that would bring this like pretzel dessert thing that was like, she was like, y'all don't, she was from the Midwest, and she was always like, y'all don't eat this, and we were like, what is that? And it was like, it was like something melted over pretzels. Please. With like white chocolate and but no, I mean, it wasn't it like bad. white chocolate pretzels. I don't know what it was. It was weird. Brett, tomorrow when this episode airs, yes. we need to tweet out what's your weird Thanksgiving dish. Yeah, and I want okay. people, people to respond. Responding. I want pictures. I want to know like what crazy aunt brought it to the table mm-hmm. that you learned it from. I like love talking about this because I think it's really interesting to see one, the roots of like where people come from. Cause like I think some of the craziest shit really does come from the Midwest. <laughs> like, I don't know. Florida probably has. And the, there's like a lot of like yeah. Southern stuff that like people, like people legitimately have sweet potato pie here. And like no one from the North knows what the hell we're talking about. It's totally. Just I have no idea. Essentially a pumpkin what? pie. I mean, I know like mac and cheese is regional like too. A, a sweet potato oh, pie is like a pumpkin pie, potatoes. but it's like made mm-hmm. with sweet like potatoes. Like that people didn't we call them yams. But also oh, yeah, we, do we do them. sweet potatoes and like I tried to, I brought up baking sweet potatoes one time at Will's house and they were like, well, that's a dessert. I'm like, well, it's a dessert that you eat with dinner. Yeah. Right. Right. Because it's still like a carb. Aside, it is well, until you put the marshmallows on top, but right? or, like, the or like or like the or, <laughs> or like the uh, the cinnamon sugar pecans. And it's yeah. also interesting to know how people eat their like potatoes or mac and cheese and stuff. Like I'm like a mashed potato. If I'm thinking Thanksgiving, mashed potatoes and gravy. Mm-hmm. But then when we did Friendsgiving, like people will bring like, you know. Just roasted potatoes, and I'm like, that's not Thanksgiving potatoes. That's just yeah. roasted potatoes. Yeah. Right. Like, yes, you can have them as a side, but it's not like a Thanksgiving. We never side. really had uh, mac and cheese as a mac side and cheese. Yeah, we up. didn't. We I think I made it one year, but it wasn't like a staple in our Thanksgiving. Yeah. I we had it because I couldn't eat meat growing up because I had a kidney disease. Mm-hmm. So I was always like the kid with mac and cheese, the kids' table, and it like kind of got just continued as a joke. And we still do it to we, this day. We d- sometimes do it. And also green bean casserole is not always. I Some years we have it and some years we don't. Sure. Um, do you think you have ham as an option on Thanksgiving? No. That's strictly a, like a Christmas Eve dish Ooh, for me. See, I think ham. Okay. People have different names for this. I think this is a southern thing to call it dressing. Or is this stuffing? stuffing. Um, yeah, stuffing. But Stovetop do you stuffing. Stuff is... The stuffing. bird? No, well, my grandparents used to. And they would Will's do it like dad super good. Gr- like what? my my that grandfather. Like so much work. Well, like I think he stuffs the bird and makes a yeah, like a casserole a dish. 
grandpa would like he used the whole bird. He was one of those like grew up on a farm. You don't like, waste nothing stuff. Nothing goes to waste. He ate like the turkey neck, the gizzards, the like giblets. I remember the, the mom giblets. Oh, Jules oh, puts giblet yeah. in gravy, and it strikes oh, me. Yeah. It's really like it tastes fine, but like when you're looking at it and there's mm-hmm. like the neck sitting in the gravy, you're like, yeah. okay, yeah. Can she we... keeps it out like on the on counter the stove all day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's uh, Grandma, she, her and Grandpa would have gotten along. Yeah, yeah she's you, like, not, waste not, want not, and you're like, can you put the neck? No, away? but we want to hear about your weird casseroles that like you thought were totally normal or desserts. Some people just have weird desserts, like you know, pies mm-hmm. are obviously, but then some people have like some weird dessert casserole that they made, and I'm like, yeah, okay, that's it's just an excuse to make that. Do you call them casseroles or hot dishes? Casserole for sure. I think call for them hot sure. Dishes? I think that's like a Minnesota thing to call What's it a like, hot dish. When you put like the, uh, they're they're not like onion, but like fried. They look like the top of sushi, like they're crispy on top, like fried, tempura pieces. The fried onions. Is that yeah? Fried onions. Oh yeah, that's, that's, onion. that's green bean casserole, right? The French onion, the like the French's French fried onions. Fried onions. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Literally used to eat those out of the thing as a kid. I think I did. Too. I will say those just. <laughs> You know, speaking of things, even just having a can of those, popping them in a salad, delicious. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you don't need to wait. Just to the salads on Thanksgiving that gets like you know. Oh, uh, courtesy, one. courtesy. We tongs, never so. had salad on Thanksgiving. It's because Natalie's a health nut, so like she's like, yep. and I was like, I'll bring the salad. I was like, salad. <laughs> she is gonna make a salad. like legit harvest salad. It's gonna be good, but like Natalie, eat a gr- Natalie wanted to like n- like tone down the like condensed soup situation, and I was like. No. Guess what? No, no, no. The the greens we have on Thanksgiving are going to be like very, very boiled to basically like no mushiness nutrients. and mm-hmm. also covered in some sort of cheese she gravy. She tried sauce. to say that I couldn't bring the cream. I bring the cream corn every year. And, you know, I think she's just a little jealous because it is my niece's favorite dish mm. over all of her dishes that she like slaves away. And I use canned uh, frozen corn. Duh. Yeah. I'm trying to like hand shut. She's some like, corn. you need to grill the corn and cut it off. And I was like, no. <laughs> One, grilled corn isn't going to taste as good in creamed corn. Part of Thanksgiving is just having everything be like, like processed just so shit. butter. <laughs> just put butter on everything. The year that I made the broccoli cauliflower Brussels dish at yes. Will's family was the greenest thing on the table. Like everything else was like a yellow or an orange or yeah. beige. Bread. And like, I, I remember his aunt being like, Brussels sprouts. Like, what? Who, who, invi- <laughs> who invited her? She yeah. was like, it needs to no, be she, she like was very, I was like, it's literally covered in cheese and bacon. Mm. Like, it's and piped down mushroom. Aunt Melissa. Like, No, no, no. <laughs> I think she just was literally like shocked. She was like, wait, what? <laughs> Vegetable? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. well. Send us yeah, I don't want vegetables us. that aren't covered in some sort of sauce. Correct. Like, we're not again the green beans. We try to make healthy and put wrapped in you know green bean bunches, and it was like no Stupid. one had a single bean. <laughs> yeah, I love it. My, my only like a Thanksgiving tradition is is I am a glass of bourbon by the fire after the Thanksgiving meal and just pass out. That's the only nap I take what's every your, year. What's your like? Pre Thanksgiving, do y'all do like a dinner or do you do a lunch? Uh, we do like the two o'clock. Yeah, we're we the two, two o'clock family. Do you like? We'll always watch the Lions game. Yep. It... So we have, we have football is always on, but I wouldn't call it like nobody's. We're not around the TV like cheering on you watch the X Y Z team. You know, it's I think that's on too. You know what? But I, the best not, one is, and I'm, I'm really watching. dipping into some Sunday scary stuff, so I'm just gonna stop yeah. what I'm saying. But the dog show. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I, that's a, that's a thing for sure. We only used to really sit around and watch football when it was Texas. Mm-hmm. Now they don't play on Thanksgiving, and they they're terrible. We alert. would always they do. Suck. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we would always do like games that devolved into like playing poker or euchre or something like that. Oh, that's fun. We card, tried to like, catch rays, but sometimes yeah. it got a little too. It's too competitive, and we like <laughs> want to kill each other. Shocker! Shocker. Do that one, <laughs> um, and that'll do it for us, guys. That's a that'll that's a fun one. A that was a uh, straight eighty minutes that just was like wow. <laughs> I know. Flew by. Sorry, guys. No, I think I think people will enjoy that one. Um, subscribe to this podcast. Rate it five stars. Give us a review. Maybe tell a friend about it. Hit the hotline number eight 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 three six two M A I L. That's eight 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 three six two. 6245, or you can write in at the link in the Twitter bio at Mail In Podcast. Lily Betcher, where can the folks find you? They can find me, oh no, I always get that. Whenever, at Lil Betch. Okay. L I L B O E T T C H. Nice. 
And I think on Twitter, I'm at Lily Betch. Do you even use Twitter? Not really. Let me, let me f- I'll fill you in. You are. Maybe I'm. L I L B O E T T C H E R. Oh, I'm Lil, at Lil Betcher. Lil Betcher. Okay, but on Insta, I'm Lil Betch. Correct. Sally, where can the folks find you? Sally DeFreeze, Instagram and Twitter. I am at Schmerriman on both as well. Thank you, Randy, for on being on the ones and twos. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye.